Coming up, I take a deep dive into the features and functions of the Yaesu FT891. If you're new to this radio or thinking of buying one, you'll certainly want to keep watching. KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, and this is my continuing series on the Yaesu FT891 portable transceiver. The FT891 packs quite a punch in a very small package, but the biggest complaint is the user interface, as the limited number of buttons and hides many of the functions behind the menus. Well, in this video, we're going to dig into those buttons and functions and show you how to make the most of this extremely versatile rig. To begin with, let's start out at the front of the rig. Looking towards the display, you have a row of buttons on the top and bottom of the display, two knobs on the left, and a larger tuning knob on the right. The buttons on the top handle frequency, tuning, and mode features, and the buttons on the bottom are functions that deeper control the radio. On the left is the volume and multi-function controller knob. We turn on the radio by pressing and holding the red power button at the top right of the transceiver. You'll receive a brief welcome message and your power source voltage at the bottom right of the screen. To lock the buttons, momentarily press that same power button. To adjust the volume, turn the AF level knob on the upper left of the unit. Behind the AF level is the RF gain. The RF gain rotates 360 degrees and most of the time you'll have it turned to its maximum signal, although you can turn it down if you are receiving a very strong signal. Below the volume knob is the multi-function controller. This knob rotates and presses in and works with the function button in selecting menu items. To adjust the frequency, you rotate the tuning knob. Like any transceiver, you spin the dial left or right. If you want to move quickly to a frequency, you can press the fast button. This is located on the top unit left of the power button. This changes the step rate from 10 hertz to 100 hertz per step or 20 kilohertz for an entire dial rotation. Below the tuning knob is the drag control. You can tighten or loosen the drag of the knob to your personal preference. To the left, it will be at its loosest setting, and as you move the slider to the right, the drag will tighten. To select a band to operate on, press the band button on the top of the panel. You will see all the available amateur bands listed numerically. Turn the tuning dial to select a band. When you pause from tuning the dial, the radio will switch to that band. Behind the band button is the mode button. This is where you select the mode of operation, be it sideband, CW, data, or something else. Press and hold the band button to access the mode button. Again, turn the tuning dial to select the mode, and when you pause from the dial, the radio will switch to that mode. Moving to the left, the next four buttons deal with memory and VFO switching. The FT891 has only one VFO, but you can choose between a main band and a sub band using the AB button. Pressing the button momentarily will shift between the two, while a long press will set both VFOs to the same data and frequency values. This is a handy function if you want to quickly switch between two defined bands, frequencies, or modes. Next up are the V to M and M to V buttons. These buttons can assign a VFO frequency and setting to a memory channel or a memory channel to the VFO. If you frequent a net and on a certain frequency, uh, you can put it into a memory channel. And if the net needs to move, pressing the memory to VFO button will allow you to quickly make that adjustment. Another feature of the FT891 is that the 60 meter frequencies are already pre-assigned to 10 memory channels. Since the 60 meter band is channelized, the, this makes getting on that band very easy. Press the VFO to memory key to get into memory mode and then rotate the multi-function dial until you get to the 60 meter channels. Those are channels 501 to 510. There are five channels for the sideband operation and five channels for CW operation. The last button on the top is the QMB or Quick Memory Bank. 
The Q and B are five temporary memory channels where frequencies are added in a first in, first out fashion. Say you want to monitor uh, two or more frequencies, like there's a station on, fre on frequency one that it's in a pileup and it's too big to break. Well, you can mark that frequency, move on, and quickly return to it. Press and hold QMB to add that frequency to the list. Then when you tune away, you can momentarily press QMB again to return to it. You can do this for up to five frequencies. And when you add a sixth, the first one on your list will be discarded. Moving to the bottom of the display, you'll find the function button, three programmable buttons marked A, B, and C, and a clarifier button. Well, starting with the clarifier, this is also known as Receive Incremental Tuning, or RIT, on other brands of transceivers. You can adjust your receive frequency while keeping your transmit frequency constant. This is handy if the station calling you is slightly off frequency, but you want to maintain your transmit frequency. To activate, press the clarifier button and turn the multifunction knob. You can reset the clarifier uh, to receive frequency by pressing and holding the multifunction button. The A, B, and C buttons on my radio may be different than what you see on yours. That's because I've programmed my buttons for my most used functions of the transceiver. The default settings when you purchase the radio are IF shift, scope, and noise blanker. But I seldom use the scope and noise blanker, so I replace them with the digital notch filter and the voice memory keyer. The front buttons are easily customizable, so if there's a function you find yourself frequently uh, going to, feel free to customize your front buttons to your own personal preference. To do that, press the function button to enter the function menus and rotate the multifunction dial to select a function. Now press and hold either the A, B, or C button. That function will move to the corresponding button. Speaking of function menus, there are a few standard function menus on the FT891 and a few extra ones depending on what advanced feature you are using. For example, the voice memory keyer menu, which we highlighted in a previous video, can be enabled from the radio's main menu. We'll talk about the other special menus in a future video, but right now we're going to concentrate on the three default menus. Repeated pressings of the function button toggles through the function menu screens. When you want to exit the function menu, press the clarifier button to return to the main display. To select a menu item, use the multifunction button to highlight the menu item and then press the multifunction button to either activate or adjust the menu setting. For example, say we want to activate the speech processor. This increases the average power output while in sideband mode. We rotate the multifunction knob to highlight the PRC feature and then press the button. The processor level pop-up screen will appear and we can rotate the multifunction dial to change that setting. Press the multifunction button to close the pop-up. To turn off the processor, press the button again so that the function item is no longer bolded. Now that you know how to adjust a setting, let's go through the functions on the first screen. TNR or Tuner activates the ASUS ATS-100 or ATAS-120 auto tune antenna. If the ATAS120 is not connected, the button will do nothing. Vox, VOX, puts the transceiver into voice operated mode. That's handy if you're wearing a headset and don't want to press the push to talk button. PRC is the speech processor. I run my processor at the default level of about 50. And depending on your voice quality, you may want to make an adjustment. To do that, you'll want to watch the ALC meter while transmitting and then make, that, make those adjustments. We'll talk about ALC in a bit. Next is monitor. This channels your transmitted audio to your headphones. Handy for making audio adjustments. I usually leave the monitor off. SPL is for split operation. Namely, it will set an adjustable 5 kHz offset between your A and your B VFOs. Some DX operations use split operation as a way of managing their pileups. IPO is called the intercept point optimization. This is what Yesu calls the internal receive preamplifier. It will amplify weak signals while minimizing strong signal overload. The FT891 has only one IPO setting, either on or off. Conversely, 
ATT is attenuation. This will attenuate your front end receiver by 12 dB. Also handy for strong nearby signals. There is only one um, attenuation setting on the FT891, either on or off. NAR is the one touch narrow DSP filter. Pressing this will set your deviation down to 1.8 kilohertz for sideband or 500 hertz for CW. You can also use this one touch button for quick narrow settings without having to use the more adjustable bandwidth control. NB is the noise blanker. The FT891 has a very capable and adjustable noise blanker. This is used to eliminate pulse noise from vehicle engines while mobile. When you activate the control, you can select a setting between 0 and 10, with 10 being the most aggressive. Turn the knob until the noise just disappears. I found that it will eliminate most engine noise at around the 4 or the 5 setting. SFT is the IF or Intermediate Frequency Shift feature. I find this to be very useful as it allows you to adjust the DSP filter passband to reduce or eliminate nearby noise. For example, if another station sets up near your operating frequency, you can use the IF shift to move your passband and eliminate that noise. I keep this button on my front panel for that very reason. Now we talked about the WDH or width filter when describing the narrow band function. Width allows you to adjust your passband from 1.8 to 3.2 kHz for sideband and 500 to 3 kHz for CW. The default for both of these modes is 2.4 kHz. Increasing the bandwidth will give you fuller audio, but opens you up to more interference. Reducing the bandwidth helps eliminate interference, but shortens your audio range. If you use the IF shift and the bandwidth functions together, you can get really creative in fighting uh, adjacent interference. The last interference fighter on this screen is the NCH or notch filter. The FT891 has a digital notch filter that we'll talk about in a bit, but you can also manually adjust the notch to null out a strong adjacent signal. This is good for eliminating tuner uppers, birdies, or other types of atmospheric or man-made noises. And that's all the functions on page one. Moving on to page two by pressing that function key again, uh, the first menu item that we see is the MTR or meter. This allows us to select which display function meter we will see during transmit. Commonly, the SWR meter is displayed, but you can view up to five different meters. Transmit power, ALC, SWR, speech compressor, and IDD, which is the current drain. The two meters that I like to use are either the SWR or the ALC. I'll use ALC to adjust the mic gain, processor, and uh, transmit audio levels. This helps you modulate your voice so you don't overdrive the transmitter. In the field, I'll often switch to the SWR meter to watch how my antenna system is performing and if I need to make an adjustment. SCP is the spectrum scope monitor feature. The FT891 has a very rudimentary band scope. I say rudimentary as its limited display processor capability and single VFO don't allow for much of a full feature band scope. You won't see the resolution and um, activity that you might get with an IC7300, and it has to mute the audio in order to provide a live view of the scope. But you know, we can, it can give you a nice picture of band activity, and you can use that scope to move from one strong frequency to another. In order to use the scope, the SCP button has to be assigned to one of your ABC buttons on the front panel. Yesu defaults the scope feature to one of those buttons when you first get the radio. Press the scope to activate it. Uh, the transceiver takes a snapshot of the band activity, and then you can use the tuning dial to move from frequency to frequency. On, when the scope feature is active, the SPN button changes the span of the bandwidth, and the SWP, or sweep button, takes another snapshot. And then the LV1 button changes the reference level's strength of the displayed signals. To get into the live mode, press and hold for one second the SWP or the sweep button. To leave the band scope, either press the function or clarifier buttons on the front display. AGC is the automatic gain control. AGC helps maintain a constant audio level for changing or fading signals. You have the choice between auto, fast, mid, or slow speeds. I leave my AGC set to auto, 
which seems to work well in the field for me. If you turn the AGC off, strong incoming signals maybe become distorted and the S meter on receive will cease to function. Leaving the AGC off can also affect the digital noise reduction system. Speaking of noise reduction, the DNR is the DSP noise reduction. The FT891 has a 32-bit intermediate frequency digital signal processor that helps eliminate background noise. Enabling the noise reduction gives you a scale of 1 to 15 to choose from. Now those aren't noise reduction levels. Instead, they are 15 different noise profile algorithms that you can choose from. Some are more aggressive than others, and some work better for different types of noise. Yaesu really doesn't give you any guidance on what profile does what, but instead tells you to experiment until you find a profile that works for the current noise situation. Honestly, I find that noise reduction has kind of a weird watery sound and it can mask out weak stations, so I seldom use it in the field unless I'm in a high noise environment or I'm monitoring, listening to some real strong stations. And if that, it's usually set at either the five or the six settings. I find five or six to be the most pleasing to me. The DNF or DSP auto notch filter automatically notches out a strong carrier signal that pops up in your passband. This feature is indispensable for eliminating tuner uppers and I will, I will use it all the time. This is the other button that I've added to my programmable buttons on the front panel of my display. CNT is the contour function. The contour allows you to adjust the shape of the incoming signal. Much like the tone controls, on an audio receiver, the high and the low levels can be set in the main menu, and then the contour lets you shift the mid-range of the audio. Super handy for interference fighting. You can use it to regain some of that lost fidelity when you narrow a signal or shift the passband. The MOX or MOX button engages the transmitter. Press and hold the multifunction button to turn the transmitter on. Press the button again to release the transmitter. TXW is used in conjunction with the split operation. Uh, when split is turned on, pressing the TXW button will allow you to listen to the transmit frequency. MEQ enables the parametric microphone equalizer. You can tailor the transmit audio of your voice style and microphone type. This is handy if you're using, say, a studio mic or you want an audio profile that is sharp to break through pileups. For standard field operation, I leave the equalizer turned off. Finally, the QMB is the quick memory bank channel list. You can view what your last five quick memory bank channels were. Now the third and final screen are the CW settings. And I'm gonna dedicate a separate video to CW operation with the FT891 as this video is really getting long enough. But that's an overview of all of the buttons and function menus of the F Yaesu FT891. There are a lot more features to this transceiver and we haven't really dug deeper into the menu system. But knowing these functions will get you on the air and be able to use this transmitter at its highest potential. Do you have any questions about the FT891 functions? We'll leave them in the comments below. Also, if there's an FT891 feature or tip you want more instruction on, let me know about it and we'll add it to the series. But that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.